Central, 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, and 1 p.m. Mountain Standard. Available at JiggyJigWire.net, live video, live audio, and uh, everything else. Check out RadioZenu.com as well. for and uh, Get us on the TuneIn app. Great marketing partner. Let's talk about them right now. D.A. Carr is announcing the release of her latest novel, Link, a sci-fi mystery thriller. D.A. Carr announced uh, earlier today that her latest novel, Link, is now available for sale on Amazon. Link is a sci-fi mystery thriller. It is set in the year 2800 in a future apocalyptic world where time jumping becomes a means to control the human race. Link is a suspenseful, intriguing, and action-filled, says D.A. Carr. Tom Clancy and Clive Custler fans will enjoy reading this book. Check it out today. It's Link. Go to Amazon.com and search L-I-N-K by D.A. Carr. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's get into it with our next guest here on the program. We've got in studio with us today Iggy T, formerly of All Natty. And uh, his his manager and uh, I I it's either it's either uh, another I don't know another another rapper on the girlfriend couch next to your manager I, I I didn't think it was the girlfriend I thought it was like one of those ninja assassins like uh, <laughs> freaking uh, Castro had or who, who was the one that it, we'll, we'll find out from Mike Game he knows his history he'll be able to tell us about what what world leader had a ninja assassin as uh, that was a uh, was it was it Fidel Castro, Mike? We've got Mike Game on the telephone. How are you, sir? Uh, man, hanging out, get ready to go to my little sister's birthday party. <laughs> now, pretty excited about it. <laughs> you gotta, sound damn excited, excited about, about it. I, about it. <laughs> well, I fucking got one of those baby carrier backpack things, so me and my baby are gonna walk around that packed up. It is so odd that 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 uh that you've become all converted and everything, and you're a you're you're a Mormon I'm now, that. and you're. I'm you're... not Mormon. I left that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that that's that that's an update. Uh, uh, Mike, you you've also requested this time today. Um, I'm I'm assuming you're on here to defend Kanye. But, uh, uh... Yeah. Okay. Of course I'm here to defend Kanye. Okay, we'll go. I'll always defend Kanye. <laughs> Kanye can punch my baby in the face, and I'll be looking at my baby like, what the fuck did you do to Kanye? <laughs> oh Why is Kanye punching you in the face right now? You gotta sit back and assess the situation and see what you did to have Kanye react this kind of way. <laughs> nah, he, wow. Just, just, just people just get really mad at this thing. Like, I think he's just trolling people at this point. Where he was like, Beck should have gave his Grammy to Beyonce. I was like, no, he probably should have gave it to Smith, uh, Sam Smith, who I would have gave it to. <laughs> but, because Beyonce CD is terrible. It's a fuck, It's like 17 tracks of fucking Jay-Z. Like, that's all Beyonce talks about. There's a song, Drunk in Love, where she fucks Jay-Z in the kitchen. There's a chin where she blows Jay-Z in front of a limo driver. It's just a little bit too explicit for my face. It is Mike Game, the legendary Mike Game on the telephone, uh, 37 minutes after the hour. We were just talking with Iggy T, formerly of All Natty, about um, the Wichita music scene. Um, what are your thoughts on the Wichita music scene, Mike? Um, I don't know. I try to get outside of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I- I'm just like really just losing with these fucking rappers. If I hear one more fucking rapper talk about his guns and shit, I'm gonna show him a gun and be like, "Hey, bro, what's up?" What's up this shit? <laughs> you know, we know, we know my military history. I'm gonna talk yes. about shit. Like these motherfuckers are working at like Target and fucking Sam's Club and Dylan's and bullshit jobs like that, but they selling dope and they got guns. And every every fucking rapper is like, "I'm gonna put my city on." Motherfucker, this city have like. In the metropolitan area, like well, over a million people in the metropolitan area, I'm pretty sure which y'all's known, bro. Already <laughs> on the map. The city in it is the biggest city in Kansas. We don't need the help. <laughs> we don't need your help, shitty rapper. <laughs> wow. Help, <laughs> now, um, Mike, uh, besides defending Kanye and uh, talking about Wichita music, um what 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 is your uh what is your thoughts on on some of the interesting things going on in the world uh 
I I I I want to hear some some mic gameness out of you. <laughs> give, give me give me uh, a, um. Well, 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 we'll start with Obama. What do you think of the well, how how good is the job is the president doing? Horrible. <laughs> Horrible <Amazing>. says <laughs> I knew it. Horrible. I think he's amazing. Because uh, um okay well I mean like are we comparing him to other presidents because there's can't do worse than George Bush or Ronald Reagan so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Obama's kind of doing that right now, trying to put us in World War Three. So, well, there goes the thing. Two weeks ago, when Jordan, uh, when uh, ISIS set fire to that Jordan pilot, all I heard from pundits was like Obama would never have the balls to do some some shit like that. They kill a fucking white girl. Of course, now we're all mad about this. Now Obama's like, oh, we're gonna fuck these niggas up, and everybody's like, no, we just laugh. I was like. How about this? ISIS is a threat that even Al Qaeda is like, yeah, fuck those guys. We'll help you. <laughs> like, ISIS is a real problem and a real area in the world, and that needs to be addressed. But since we went on all these imaginary wars that I actually had the privilege of being in, these imaginary fake wars, uh, where's Wado with weapons and shit? Um, <laughs> Say it all to them. <laughs> I don't know what happened to 9/11 being an inside job. I I, I know it's that I know job. that I know that Sandy Hook has been recently. Uh, what uh, happened to the gold under the World Trade Center that was hidden there? That's right. What happened to the gold why, underneath why the World Trade Center? Why was the World, World Trade, Center? Trade Center hit? Because there was a bunch of gold that wasn't ours buried under it, and our government took it. I've never heard about. I've never heard about this gold. Look it up, <laughs> man. Gold in Middle New York City. Uh, look it up. That just deserved to get stolen. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's stupid. Hey, guys, hey, we're going to build these towers in New York City, but hey, first in the basement, put some gold in that. Let's <laughs> put some gold down there, yeah, boys. Where you get, New York City, where you get mud for iPhones and Papa John's coupons. <laughs> <laughs> One minutes after the hour, the legendary Mike game on the telephone. Iggy T in studio. Um, we heard from Ross Long on the telephone in the first hour. Uh, he showed. <laughs> I know it's amazing. Ross is back. He's uh he's in Colorado. He's in Colorado smoking pot. He's still bicycling. He's still bicycling. He's still smoking pot. He's um he's hanging out in Colorado. He, he's in Colorado. He doesn't need to buy weed from Cash. No, no, no. He's no. He's he's not buying weed from from a from, from Cash Hollister, who who two weeks or not not even two weeks ago this week uh, told me that um, the only reason that um, uh, Kim Kelly, the guy that does the Wichita Cipher, uh, apparently the reason that that Cash has let him get away with it for so long is because he quote unquote did it the right way. And that you and I should have asked his permission before we attempted to do our version of the Cypher show. Uh, actually, since our version was a totally different concept. <laughs> Wasn't your guys' version so the first that. one? <laughs> well, that too. I mean, Me and Ross did the first all, one. I remember yeah. we came up and did an interview with you, Mike, all, me and all Natty, and then uh, somebody dropped the microphone that. Yep. and broke it. And DV was pissed. Yeah, that's, that, yeah, that still was not me. I paid DV for it, but it still wasn't me. I paid DV for it because I had the money, but I was like, yeah, I didn't drop your mic, bro. <laughs> I, I have been telling, uh, and I don't, I have nev never seen any video posted. I don't know if people just decided that it was too, too brutal to post or what it was, but I've never seen video of your incident from the Royal Rumble party. And I was talking about it earlier today with Iggy T about the fact that you had, you were shirtless and in one hand had a, a, a burning Jesus and in the other a Quran. And, uh... <laughs> 
I've never seen this video posted. Did, did, did that even happen? Was I hallucinating? What happened there? Uh, it, it happened. <laughs> so I gave him the opportunity to say no, it never happened. And the typical Mike came back and he's like, yeah, yeah, I did. Hey, at least he's honest. At least he's not ashamed. I was burning the blue-eyed white American Jesus that the Mormons gave me. Because I'm okay. Because, see, I'm not really cool with white Jesus, but I'm going to accept this is what they've been doing for years now. The, the Mormons are trying to tell me that Jesus was American. Jesus this is where. Black. Well, I know that, but <laughs> every, everybody knows that. But I was like, I'm just going to accept that motherfuckers are going to be praying to white Jesus forever. But American Jesus? Nah, son. No. no. He could be Mexican, you know, Jesus. You know, hey, <laughs> hey, all I'm saying is Jesus is a Mexican name. Hey, Zeus, we, us, us white people know, just changed it to make it sound like we were calling him Jesus. He's probably actually like, oh, Lord, hey, Zeus. Oh, Lord, hey, Zeus. <laughs> oh, Lord, hey, Zeus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I, had a, I, had a, I had to leave being a Mormon because like, I couldn't buy all this uh, white supremacy that they have, that subtle, it's like subtle white supremacy. Like Native Americans were like some descendants of some powerful person, and that's why they were in America. And pretty much, if you're not white, there's a reason in the past life that you are not white. Like, okay. Uh, I was, like if you were if you were born a black baby, some shit that your parents did was the reason why you're black. I mean, the fact that your parents are in fact black, but then their parents did something, and so on and so forth. I was like, whoa, white supremacy. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> now, uh, now, Mike with us today um I, I i do want to talk a little bit of professional wrestling with mike while we've got him on the phone uh, yeah. um there is a report today from wrestlezone.com that uh mike johnson of pwiinsider.com is reporting that the 16-time world heavyweight champion and two-time hall of famer the greatest professional wrestler of this era the nature boy rick flair that's my opinion, not Mike's, has signed a deal with CBS Sports that will see him record a weekly podcast. He is expected to interview all sorts of personalities from around the entertainment business, including wrestlers, musicians, actors, and other non-wrestler athletes. CBS Sports is the same group that Taz is currently signed with for his Human Suplex Machine podcast, and uh, the official announcement should be made sometime in the next two weeks. What do you think of Ric Flair getting into the podcasting game? I, it will probably be the most amazing thing I've heard in my life. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> you know, at some point, he's going to get drunk and start cutting promos on people. That's going to be awesome. It's going to happen. Now, um, now, Mike game with us today. Uh, before we let you go, Mike, there is a, a, are you going to be putting out any new music anytime soon for people to uh, experience? Uh, yeah, I got a... Uh, me and Tyler, aka Prima Facia, we got the Damage Control album that's coming out in March, and sometime Speaking shortly after that. that. And I'll be releasing my final album, The Audacity of Hope. And yes, that was the name of Obama's autobiography. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, no, this, this other one, my, my CD is like all musical and stuff. It's going to be pretty awesome. Polarizing. It's like Jesus. If you listen to Kanye West's album Jesus, it's just like that. Well, uh. Except for no song. Except there's no songs about fucking Kim Kardashian. There's no song about Kanye. Kim Kardashian is always a bad decision. <laughs> Now, um, now, Mike, um, let's let's make the announcement. I guess since we've uh, we've got you on the phone, in the month of March, you will be in studio. When? When will you be here? Uh, I don't know, probably like second or uh, not the fifteenth, because that's the J Cole show. Okay. It's a Sunday. So, okay. Fuck it, dude. Fuck it. First, fuck it, dude. First week of March, man. Put me in. Put me in Thailand. March first. March first. We will see Mike Game in studio here, and uh, maybe he'll maybe he'll bring some alcohol and get my girlfriend white girl wasted again, like like he did at the Royal Rumble party. Hey. <laughs> right. So, uh, 
Well, uh, well, Mike. Uh, before, uh, also, one more thing before I let you go. When is your uh, R and B group or whatever going to be uh, coming My out? Group? That 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 group you said you were going to do that wasn't a rap group. It was something else. Oh. My folk band, Reckless Abandon. That's it, the folk band. When is this coming out? This summer. Okay. Well, let me know, because I want to get you guys booked here in uh, Hutchinson. I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if Hutchinson's even ready for that greatness. <laughs> okay, well, we won't book you. I don't care what we do. <laughs> Some gay-ass folk music, dog. We're not ready for that. <laughs> like Bob Dylan music, which... The word nigga in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's always good. <laughs> okay, Mike. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on March 1st then. All right, man. All right, brother. Have a good one. Late. Later. Mike.